I said it couldn't be done, but here we are. What's in my image for everyone? Welcome to SETI Astro. So for all the non-PixInsight users out there, what's in my image was a script I made for PixInsight. It utilizes the astrometric solution that PixInsight finds for your XISF files and then loads up a, a really nice interface such that you can explore around the image, um, define user-defined search regions, and query various online astronomical databases like Simbad, Vizier, Mast, Ned, uh, just, just a whole bunch of options with annotation tools and stuff. It relied heavily on uh, PixInsight's internal structure in order to run, and I didn't think it'd be possible for me to make a standalone version. But I spent a lot of time, and I am very happy to announce that we do now have a standalone version. So head on over to SETIastro.com. From there, I have a menu bar at the top for Astro programs. We have Cosmic Clarity, SETI Astro Suite, and now What's in My Image. If you click What's in My Image, it'll take you to it. And from here, it has the download link for the standalone. And I've also incorporated in SETI Astro Suite. So if you go to the SETI Astro Suite page, What's in My Image is a tab in the Astro Suite. So you could either just get the updated Astro Suite or the standalone What's in My Image application if you don't need all the other uh, programs in the SETI Astro Suite. For all three operating systems, What's in My Image is a single file. So in Windows, it's What's in My Image.exe. Mac and Linux have their own executable. So you could just extract it and put it wherever you want to keep your other programs. Now, there are some additional niceties about having this outside of PixInsight, actually. So when you load your image, your image could be of a variety of formats now. You could have TIFF images, JPEGs, PNGs, FITs. If it has an astrometric solution in the FITs header, it will utilize that. Otherwise, it's going to prompt you to blind solve it via astrometry.net. So no matter what image you have, putting it in here, you can figure out what's in that image, which means you can get any image on you find a cool astronomy image on the web, you don't know what those objects are in there, you could port it into what's in my image and go through the, the solving of it. So let's load an image in. I have a, a JPEG here of just the Andromeda galaxy. And right away it says, no astronomy data found. Would you like to perform the blind solve? I'm gonna click yes. If this is the first time you've ran this, it'll ask you what your API key is for astrometry.net. And in the status here, it'll tell you what it's doing. It uploaded it to astrometry.net. Now it's waiting for a job ID. And if you've ever blind solved with astrometry.net, it could take a few minutes depending on the load on their server. But now it said the job ID is found and it's processing our image. So we'll just wait for the calibration data to come back. After the astrometry data comes back, it'll say astrometric solution applied successfully. And now you can see in the dialog here, there's an RA, a deck, and an orientation. As you move your mouse across the image, it actually updates in real time the current RA and deck of the position of your mouse. And the orientation is the orientation of the image with respect to north. You could also copy the RA and deck to the clipboard with a little button here if you need to use that information elsewhere. And there is a wrench icon here where you can determine how many results you should get when you do your queries. Right now it's set to 100. You could raise or lower that. And more importantly, if you load in a FITS that just doesn't have a good astrometric solution in the header, you could just force a blind solve from here as well. So that's something to remember. So let's go ahead and uh, just go through some of the basic functionality first on the page here. You shift click and drag to define a region. That's going to be your search region. And then you can click Query Simbad. Now that's going to query the, the Simbad online database. And it's going to populate everything in the Simbad catalog in that radius. 
And then down in the tree box below, here's all the objects. So you can click an object down below and it'll turn the circle up here green for you so you can see where that is. And then vice versa, if you click an object in the search here, it'll highlight and move to the row in the tree box where that information lives. All this information is explorable. So if you double click either the row or the object, it will open your web browser and take you directly to that Simbad entry for it. So you can further explore your objects. The other thing you can do is save all your results down here to a CSV file. If you want to download all those objects, it'll have all this data in there. And you see I, I pulled in some extra data that was not available in PixInsight. We now have Redshift. And then based on Redshift, we could actually calculate the, the distance to the object. That's the co-moving radial distance, which takes into the account the expansion of the universe. And then also, another nice thing is if you put in a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF that didn't have an astro astrometric solution to it, once it's found, you can go ahead and save the plate solved fits file. So that way when you go back to what's in my image, you can just load in that fits file. It'll have all the appropriate plate solved solution for you in there so you don't gotta do the blind solve again. Now let's go over some of the advanced features. There's a button over here for advanced search. You click that, it opens a whole nother pane to the right. And then from here, here's all the different object types that you could actually query in Simbad. I have a couple buttons over here. You could toggle them all on or off to help you. I have all the stars mapped to that button and then all the galaxies mapped to this one. And then something fun you could do is like toggle everything remove the stars, remove the galaxies, and now this is everything else. It's gonna be nebula, it's going to be emission objects, Harbig Harrow objects, supernova remnants, all those weird things that are neither a star nor a, nor a galaxy. With this search as well, you can search just within the defined search region. So let's say you just wanna search for H2 ionized regions in this search region, you can do that, and here they are. Or, let's say you wanna search for quasars in your entire image. So let's go ahead and just check quasar, QSO, and search entire image. And now you can see in the mini preview off to the right here, there are some additional red dots that showed up, and that helps you locate where all these quasars are in your image over here so you can see them better. So we have this one here. Let's check on him. This quasar is right here. It has a redshift of 1.3 and is 13 billion light years away. I, I, I just think it's, it's really cool um, searching for quasars because the light from them is so staggeringly old. Here's another one that doesn't have any redshift data. That's all right. I also made the tree box here sortable. So you could just sort, and now we can go ahead and look for some really far ones. This one here is 17.9 billion light years with a redshift of 2.1. So just, just some cool things you can do with the advanced search. Let's load in another image now. You can see this is on astrometry.net. These are all the various images I've plate solved over the time. And if you have any plate solved images on astrometry.net, you can click on this new image fits file. And it's actually gonna download the solved fits image for you. And that could be opened directly into what's in my image as well. And then you don't need to, to plate solve. It's already been plate solved for you. Load image. Here's my new image fits file. And I didn't need to solve it. It's already solved. It has the RA and deck and the orientation and, and everything for us. So let's explore this a little bit more with a deep search now. So just doing the normal query of Simbad gives these few found objects here. 
But if you click caution, deep Vizier search, it's going to search various catalogs in the Vizier database, including Gaia, SDSS, the Navy's extragalactic database, just, just a whole bunch of them. So there's a caution here. It does return a lot of results if you draw a big circle. So just be careful when you're using this. But I'm going to click Caution, Deep Vizier Search, and search this region. Now here's all the objects it found. Quite a number of them from all these various catalogs. And what's really cool that I put in here is for the stars, if there's parallax data from the Gaia survey, it's going to show up in here too. So it'll actually calculate the distance to that star based on the parallax measurement. So like this star is 137,000 light years away. This one's 15,000 light years away. And then it's smart enough to know that some objects just have a redshift and it'll calculate the, the redshift and co-moving distance for those particular objects. So just another way to do a more advanced search and then double clicking these objects, it takes you to the NED database centered at that RA and deck with just a five arc second radius around it. So it really narrows in on that particular object you're looking for. And you can follow up uh, additional information here in the NED database, right? You can click on those particular objects. You could find more information there. You could look at the IRSA finder chart where you can see various survey images from that region. Just, just a lot of cool stuff. Another search you could do is the MAST database. So the MAST database searches Hubble, JWST, Spitzer, TESS, just, just a ton of them. I have a little Hubble icon there for that one, but we can go ahead and search the, the MAST database as well. And now you can see that, yes, there, there was some space-based telescopes that did do some imaging around here. We have TESS, GALAX, and, and, and a few others. It does have the JPEG links to any of the available images. If there was a particular image there, it just puts it in the redshift column for you. And then double clicking here takes you to the MAST database centered at that location. And here's where you can get actually all the data from it, right? You can download the images if there's image files you can get the spectrum files if there's spectrum files this is where you could do some serious science um, if you want to utilize data from space-based observatories now let's go ahead and look at some of the annotation options that are within what's in my image let's go ahead and i'm going to just search for galaxies in this image since it is a, a galaxy chain I just toggled the galaxies. I'm going to search the entire image. And there's a, there's a lot of galaxies in this image, right? So what we could do, some of them are obviously just like in black nothingness. I do have an option here to show visible objects only. What that's going to do is compare the brightness at that RA and deck and just make sure it's a standard deviation above the median, right? Just, just to make sure there's something there. So if you click show visible objects only, It'll remove everything that's at least not one standard deviation above the median. And now we have our, our huge, huge list here because this is a pretty dense galaxy image. But you can go ahead and click Save Collage of Objects. Now here you have a, a bunch of different things you could put in there. I'm going to just do the name, short type, redshift and co-moving distance and click OK. What that's going to do is take a small grid around each object and make a big collage for you. And if you have, in this case, hundreds of hundreds of objects, it, it may take it a second to compile the collage for you. But when it's done, it's going to come up so you could save it. You could save it as a JPEG, PNG, or TIFF. I recommend at least a PNG. Uh, JPEGs tend to give you a lot of artifacts around text. So I'm just going to say this is my galaxy collage and save it. 
and it's going to say it it saved it at that location. Now let's go ahead and, and check out the collage it saved. So now it generated a large collage of all the galaxies in here. And you can see, um, you know, it just centers on the particular object and puts the, puts the information below it for what it is. Finally, I did load in a, a bunch of annotation tools as well. So let's go ahead and just, we'll just make a little query here. If you click show annotation tools, it pulls up uh, another window for you down here and it allows you to draw on the screen. So you can go ahead and like select a color. You can select different fonts. You can click like draw ellipse. And then it says here you use control click to add the item. So let's say, you know, you don't know what this object is over here. You can, you can circle it. Um, now let's say you want like a, a red line going to it and then some, some text, mystery object, right? So now you have all that in there. There's an undo button to undo those shapes you drew. And then, um, there's also a celestial compass. If you hit, uh, the celestial compass and then click that, it'll show you how in the sky it's actually orientate so your your northeast pointers and then there's even a little check over here to show the object names in there as well so from here you could just save the annotated image it's going to ask you if you want to save the full image so that'll save the whole thing with all the annotations or just the crop view and that's just what's in the view here so we'll go ahead and save the crop view cropped view you know, tell you it was saved successfully. And here's our cropped view. We had that little celestial compass. We drew that circle around the thing. Here's all the objects with the names. It's just some, just some things to help you if you're, you need to annotate. And then you could just clear all your annotations down here as well. One other thing you can do in the image here for annotation tools is if you hold the alt button down and then click and drag, it'll show you the distance between those two celestial objects. So these two stars are one arc minute, 40 seconds apart. So it, it's really good to like define how wide some of your objects, you know, this is 45 seconds. You know, this one only has a, a minor axis of 15 seconds. Uh, it, it's just another annotation tool you could use. And I think one last little thing is there's, there is a dark theme. If, uh, if you do want to make it darker, you can click dark theme or switch back to the light thing. Well, I know it was a lot. There's a lot of different options in here to play around with. I hope everybody has fun exploring their images, looking for new things. I know what started this whole thing for me was there was just a little planetary nebula. I had no idea what it was and I couldn't find it anywhere. And, and I spent so much time looking through so many different things in order to finally find it. And I could have found it in like four seconds with what's in my image. So. Um, this was, this was a long time coming, a lot of work put into it. Let me know if you guys have any issues. Big thanks to the channel members out there that are part of the SETI Astro community. They also had early access to an early release of this standalone version. So they've been able to play with it for a few days now. If you want to become a member, we'd love to have you. Please comment, like, and subscribe.